Hello, welcome back. Last time I was super optimistic about having everything done and thought I'd basically be finished long before now and not have any other problems. Turns out the world had other plans for me. So uh, let me take you through what I thought were the final stages of assembly and show you where things kind of went off the rails a little bit. So right, as of this recording, pad is not done, no longer feels like it was going to be close to done. I kind of really, really underestimated the last little bit. You'll see what I mean as this goes on. So what I'm doing right here is I'm at the front of the player one pad. Um, I'm working on gluing on the, uh, the front cover riser and the front cover itself. So I decided to just use wood glue to attach those into place. I could have screwed these into place, but I've used enough screws elsewhere. And this is just wood on wood. It doesn't have to be extremely secure. It doesn't have to ever come off again. So glue should do the job just fine. I thought I had plenty of wood glue, but uh, during the process of all the things I was gluing together, I actually just about ran out, so I had to go and get more. Uh, I thought that was going to be the thing standing between me and having this pad done, but no, there was there was a lot more. <laughs> anyway, so just lay the glue on there, uh, press it into place for a while until it feels reasonably secure. Um, but the other piece, uh, the particular sheet of plywood I was cutting these out of uh, was not wide enough to make that all one piece, otherwise it would be, but two pieces works just fine. The only purpose of these is just to, to change the height of that so that it matches up with the edge finish and stationary panels and everything else that's around. So this piece here basically just gets the same treatment. Just glue on wherever, make sure it fits first. This one didn't lay completely flat, it kind of wanted to bow in the middle. Uh, I tried turning it over, but then, of course, the left and right edges would uh, would stick up. Um, so I decided having it stick up in the middle was better. I kind of just hoped I could press it down with the glue, and then that would eventually hold it into place. But I would have to hold that for way longer than I wanted to. Um, and once again, it's hard to know exactly the right amount of glue to use here. I don't know if this was... I got more on that stripe. <laughs> I don't know how much is enough. I don't know how much is too much. It's just hard to know. But I mean, this this held it on, so I guess it was an okay amount. Anyway, press that down for a while. Nothing too exciting. Same thing for the other pad. Glue the risers in place. Hold them for there for a while. I decided instead of holding them there just on their own, I could just do both of these layers at once because I was I was applying pressure in the same spot, so there's no reason to let one dry separately from the other. I can just save time by doing this. Gluing is kind of an infuriatingly slow process because every time after I apply it, I kind of just have to squeeze stuff together for at least a minute. Ideally, it would be a whole lot longer than a minute, but I get impatient and usually only do it for about 60 seconds. And I haven't had anything just fall apart yet, so I guess that's been enough. I'm sure it could be stronger if I held it on better. Like I said before, the, the glue recommends clamping these together for 30 minutes. Uh, this, these, none of this is in a place where I can clamp it. And I didn't want to use as many clamps as it would take, or as much time as it would take to do that. So, I just accept a looser bond. So I'm noticing a problem here. Uh... This is the, I sense a problem, yep. This is the back cover riser. So that's so the back cover will be at the same uh, level as the front cover, since that's, uh, they're all the same material. But what I saw there was that the very back risers were sticking out a little bit past where the 2x3 was, and I suspected that the handle joint bracket would not be able to fit in there. So I bring it there to verify. <laughs> it's hard to walk on that stuff. And yeah, that just does not fit. Yep. So let's see, what's my solution to this? My solution to this is to take out the risers and trim them down with a utility knife. Works perfectly fine, just takes a lot of time and effort. I'm cutting out almost all of it. That took quite a lot of time and effort. You'll just have to take my word for it. So with that trimmed down, I can glue everything in place. Same thing in the other pad. Uh, I guess I don't show, but I, I checked again with the handle joint bracket to make sure it would fit, and it did. So player one, same treatment. All glued in place. All right, so with those done, uh, now it's time to think about the stationary panel risers. I've shown these before. They're same plywood, same principle, just for the um, 
the metal wrapped square panels, uh, they need to be there so that the height of everything lines up properly. It's basically just the arrow wells and I guess the place where the the bar bracket goes in the back that uh, doesn't get these. So I guess an alternative would have been to cut down the arrow well wood a little bit more, but I would need some kind of different tool for that that I don't know how to, uh, don't have and don't know how to use. <laughs> don't even even which I would need for that. But as you can see here, it's off by so much. I'm messing around and nothing is quite aligning the right way. This is going to be a running theme. I try another one of those to see if the piece I had was wonky. No, it was the same. I think I ran into this problem once before and never quite figured out how to fix it. So the solution I chose here was to get a whole row of those together in my miter box, cut them down all at once with a handsaw, because I don't have a power tool that can really do this appropriately. With all of those being a little bit shorter, I had some shims in there to hold them better, with all of those being a little bit shorter, um, they can be fit into place better. This is a lot of plywood to be sawing through all at once. Takes a kind of monumental amount of effort to do it with a handsaw. <laughs> Lots of sawdust. A whole bunch of pieces come off, but those are nice and even now. Yeah, do that twice more. Yep, got to do it two more times to get all the pieces because they did not all fit in that box. <laughs> anyway, those are trimmed down. Uh, you can see they leave a little bit more gap when I lay them out in this formation, but that's fine. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be able to move them inward uh, so that they would leave the space for the rest of them to be positioned. I'm trying to line them up with the seams in the wood. Uh, those are my reference point for where the arrows go. I figure it's better to actually lay the arrows in there um, to make sure that they fit appropriately. So once I'm reasonably satisfied with that layout and verify that the, the wood seams are a good enough reference point, get rid of the arrows and then just glue everything down. Same way. Lots of glue all over both pads. So I can just stick the corners all the way in the corners, then the edges can go sort of against them, kind of airing outward so that I leave as much room as I reasonably can, because these don't have to take up the entire space that of uh, frame that the stationary panel sits on. They just have to be enough to elevate it and be reasonably level and stable. So now that I've done that stuff, um, the pieces, the back cover pieces of plywood that are going on top of the risers and all around that, that was the one that I recut recently. Uh, it fits, that one fits, but somehow, I don't know how or what I did, but somehow my calculations for this one still were not right. It just does not fit in that corner there. <laughs> that piece has just given me nothing but problems. So once again, I use the handsaw to cut it down, trying to take off a very thin little piece. The plus side of this is I got a whole lot better at hand sawing once I got used to uh, some of this stuff. Saw blade didn't really want to stay in place. I tried a few different ways to hold it and clamp it, um, but it is hard to aim for just that little edge piece there. Eventually, I remember something I saw somebody else do, use a utility knife just to score the plywood a little bit, and I guess I've done this a fair bit, but mostly I cut all the way through it. But if I, I score it just a little bit, that helps act as a saw guide, so it gets the blade in the right place. This saw actually works a whole lot better than the other one that I had once I got used to it. That's a back saw. It has a rigid thing on the top, so it stays, stays straight and doesn't, doesn't buckle as much like the other one. So that's also got to trim off. Same way. Yeah, that works just fine. <laughs> I really should have taken up my parents on the offer of taking a miter saw home with me. I... Duh, that was not a good judgment call on my part not to, but... I just keep doing this by hand, and it does work, it just takes more effort, more time. 
made a little bit of a mess on the bottom, but that's easy enough to clean up. So I tried refitting this after sawing it. It was still just a hair too big, uh, so I'd work at it with the surform for a little bit to just take off that fraction of an inch that it needs to keep going down. This tool's hard to use, especially on surfaces like that. But I didn't need to use it too much for that, just a little bit. And then that piece finally can actually fit into place. It's still not 100% perfect, because like I wasn't extremely careful with my measurements. Um, because I knew I couldn't get it like exactly super precise, but with a little bit of wiggling, you know, the holes line up well enough. Good enough. Good enough. So let's see, what's going on here? I've laid out stationary panels on the player two pad, uh, and I guess I'm drilling in the holes for the screws to attach them to the frame. I'm standing on it to try to hold the panel in place. I think I just laid those on top, uh, put the corner ones all the way in the corner, and got the center one as equidistant from the rest of them as I could. This that I'm doing here turned out to be a huge mistake. You'll see why soonish. So as usual with this sort of thing, drill one hole, screw in one screw, drill a hole as far away from that hole as possible, screw in the other screw, then the rest of the holes can be drilled and the screws hold the thing in place just fine. So I repeated that process all the way through all the panels for both pads, so they all have holes to mount to the frame. Screws are in there. I didn't show me putting them in, but there they are there. They hold everything in place. Anyway, you get the idea. So screws go in all the rest of the way. I think this might be one of those screw holes where I, um, let's see, does this happen yet? No, 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 not yet. Uh, right, so stand on the things, because this is the first time they've been mounted on there. See how it feels? It feels pretty good. On my feet, at least. So up close, one of the, la uh, what I thought was about the last step of this <laughs> was to thread the USB cable through the hole and actually anchor it in place. So, plug it in. I'm going to use the same uh, wire tacks that I used for the rest of the wires for that. They're just barely large enough to fit around that cable. Uh, so those should hold the cable in place, but also give it enough strain relief that, like, if it gets yanked on or something, they can come out if they really need to, or it'll give it a little bit of slack. Uh, as I explained before, the idea with... Um, just having a USB cable threaded through a hole there is that it's not too much of a weak spot on the outside as a connector would be, as I discovered with my blue shark pad. Uh, if I accidentally step on the cable, it shouldn't tear anything out too badly. And yeah, with that extra bend in it, uh, if those wire tacks come out, it shouldn't rip the UHID out of place or anything. So I think that should be reasonably strong. It was a little hard to hit the tack and not the cable here. Because <laughs> at the angle I'm at, I cannot get the flat part of the hammer all the way down to the tack, so I have to keep changing angles and tapping in one side or the other of that to, to get it to go in. As with the other cables, I want it just tight enough that it holds the thing in place but isn't like squishing it down all the way. Looks pretty good. 
So that cable is permanently mounted there now. So player one pad gets the same stationary pre panel treatment as player two pad. All holes drilled, all screws put in. One of the screws uh, went right through the countersink. This is a problem I actually had a bunch. Apparently, apparently I was way overzealous in my countersinking and went too deep on a lot more of the holes than I thought I did. I thought only one of them was too big to hold the screw, but there was like four or five that uh, continually had this problem. So I'm trying to figure out what to do to, uh, to work around that. I decided to try this foam that I was using for everything else. That's the same stuff that went on top of the sensor brackets and the uh, uh, corner stoppers to elevate them a little bit. I decided to try just driving a screw through it and putting that in the hole to see if it can help hold things in place a little bit better. It kind of sort of semi-works. Cutting it into that <laughs> octagonal shape was completely unnecessary because I'm just going to be tearing off the extra bits once I put the screw in. I find out later that it's a lot better to double or triple up the foam because um, it's not the strongest material. I'm not sure what would be really the proper way to fix this other than cutting new metal and re-countersinking it because the hole was too big. Um, if I could have like a certain a washer that would somehow perfectly fit in place, I, I don't know how you would do that with a with a flathead screw that's supposed to sit flush. This was this was about the best solution I've so far been able to come up with. Go a little too far, metal pops up, screw has gone through, foam has gone through. <laughs> so that fix didn't quite work too well. So pull out the ruined piece of foam. Try again. So what, larger? With a larger one, and hope that it can hold a little better. Maybe not drill in quite so far. What I probably would want to do, and probably still should do, is uh, take all those screws out, take the metal off the wood and glue the two together so that even if the screw itself is not holding the metal down, it can at least hold down the wood and then the glue can hold the metal to the wood. Because I, do, I do have some glue that's capable of holding those two materials together pretty well. All right, so larger piece, just tear it off. Extra little bits that I don't tear off can stay in there and help hold the screw in against the metal and the wood. Okay. And that seemed to work there. So another day here, I think, um, I'm taping the foam to the corner stoppers that I glued together uh, the other day. Because um, that's just a thing that needed to be done. This was very similar to the... Uh, the thing I did for the sensor brackets, being done the same place, being done the same way, just measure foam, cut double-sided carpet tape uh, three ways, apply to one side, apply to the other side, and you're basically done. The scissor blades get very gummed up with the uh, adhesive portion of the tape when I do this, so I had to clean them several times throughout this process to do all of these. Yeah, it's 32 corner stoppers total. A lot of 32s in this pad. Because there's a lot of things that happen four times per arrow. Now, I had a little bit of, of a concern, and I still do, um, about the rigidity of these particular pieces. The idea with these is that they go in the corners of the arrow panels and give the, the arrows themselves something to sit on at the corners that's not the uh, sensor brackets, which go at the edges. Um, if, it, if the arrow is just sitting on the sensor brackets, uh, one, it's kind of oversensitive because that's the only thing holding it up, and two, it, uh, it wobbles a little bit because at the corners um, it's not really held down stably, or held up stably. Uh, so those give it four additional platforms to sit on. And these are also useful in adjusting the, well, hypothetically, <laughs> will be useful in adjusting the sensitivity of the pad because I could add padding to them to make the arrows sit more on them than on the sensors or vice versa. Uh, 
So anyway, tape on there, peel off the back of the tape, stick to the doubled up piece of plywood, and each one of those is done. At this point, uh, each corner stopper and each sensor bracket has the same amount of foam on it and is hypothetically the same height. But yeah, like I said about the rigidity, uh, sensors are made of rubber, they're kind of squishy. Those corner stoppers are made of plywood and they have very little give to them at all. The aero panel itself can flex a little bit, so I'll have to... It remains to be seen how well those pieces are going to work and how much adjustment I'm, I'll have to do to them. So I figure, well, everything's great. It's time to fully assemble one of my aero panels and see how that goes. So put in sensors, put in sensor brackets. Aero goes in, and... This is where I first discover that aero panel does not really want to fit in there. That's, the, a that's a problem. The way I've mounted the stationary panels is too tight against that panel. And that's just the panel. As it turns out, there's more stuff that goes in. Uh, this is where hell starts. Everything goes horribly wrong because I discover. I made a few miscalculations in the, uh, the sizing and spacing of the things on top of here, and there is just not enough room for the aero panels. Those things have to be able to move up and down freely, or the entire pad just doesn't work at all. So I'm taking out the screws for the stationary panel. I'm attempting to move it around so that that, uh, that particular arrow can fit. I tried inserting all of the other arrow panels into where they went. None of them had that same tightness problem, so I thought, okay, well, I can just fix this problem for this one arrow by maybe rotating this around a little bit, pushing it harder against that barrier, giving it just a little more room where it needs it, and everything will be good, right? <laughs> oh, man. What I should have done was to put everything all together on the top before I drilled any of these holes um, through the stationary panels. Redrilling those holes is not entirely possible. I attempt it here. Uh, well, it is. I, I found a way to do it now. But um, without something special, uh, redrilling with existing holes there, drill bits are not... Des they're designed to bore through wood or through solid wood. And, I mean, as much as I want to stand there and try to hold the thing in place, it's not going to convince the drill bit to go in in a way that it's just not designed to go. Like, if there's a hole right next to where I'm drilling, uh, it's just going to go in there no matter what you do. So moving screw holes doesn't seem to be possible the way I'm trying to do it there. But, I mean, I, I think I rotated that panel around a little bit so that any error that I'd made on the, um, on the holes in the panel would, you know, move the, move the screw holes farther away from where they were. So put the screws back in. I can kind of feel the thing shifting around just a little bit as I do that, as the screws go back into the old holes, of course. In addition to that, I had the continual hassle of the countersink being too deep and had to keep on dealing with that with foam the same way every time the screw would go in and come out. <laughs> so another reason I should just glue the two things together and stop worrying about too deep countersinking. So I tried two pieces of foam this time. It works a little better. So get those screwed in. Screw just punches through them just fine. Uh, try to get to the center of them so I have as much as I can around the edges. My ears were kind of ringing after the drilling that I had done for the stationary panel, so that uh, that verified my my need for ear protection when I'm drilling with this stuff. So I'm I'm definitely careful where it's every time I'm drilling now because I don't want to damage my hearing. Now I'm going real slow. I kind of have to guess at the depth that I want because with all the foam there, I don't have a good visual or tactile reference for exactly what is level uh, between the screw and the panel around it. So I just get it down until it seems about right, rip about the foam, then recheck and hope it's about where it needs to be. And yeah, again, this process happens every time one of those screws comes out because I can't reuse the foam insert. 
and it's pretty annoying. So I think, okay, well, that problem's all solved. Let's do an even more complete assembly. Let's get the corner stoppers in there. Those are going to be glued into place eventually. Uh, I just set them in here to make sure everything all fits. I have the tr uh, triangle bracket holders in the corners there. Um, so the brackets are going to go on top of those. This would be the, I think, the right arrow on the player two pad. Yeah. So I set the panel in. Uh, I have the thing plugged in. You can see the LED coming on. So it looks not so terrible. Feels kind of semi-okay. It's, like, extremely sensitive. I did notice that the, just the lightest touch would trigger it, so I worried a little bit about that. Um, figured I might need to double up my padding on the corner stoppers a little bit, or something like that. Here's where hell continues. That triangle bracket does not want to go in place at all. It's just way too tight against the edge finish there. That one doesn't want to go in either. So the discovery I make, the huge, horrible miscalculation that I made here was that those triangle brackets have a fair bit of thickness to them and they sit on the outside of the arrow panel. They increase the dimensions of those things by a fair bit, actually. So they need a lot more room around them than I calculated for. Uh, I did make the stationary panels a lot smaller than the dimensions uh, told me that I would need them. But the problem is the the brackets sit, they, they sort of butt their corners up against each other. Um, so if I wanted them to be square, then I do need all of the room that's required for that. So smaller stationary panels can never help with that problem. So even so, I decided to put in the screws and see what happens. Um, I kind of forced everything into place uh, and figured maybe it'll still be okay. I get to this point and screwing that in that far sticks the panel down. <laughs> that far down, that far up. Yep. It's very consistent. So an additional problem that I have here is that my uh, triangle bracket mounts are a little bit too short. I have some ideas about what I can do to elevate them. But yeah, just... <gasps> <laughs> I'm getting pretty frustrated here because everything is just going so terribly wrong with fitting these things in place. That's another screw that, at a certain level, it just sticks the thing down when it shouldn't. So it's funny, these screws, um, these are hex cap furniture screws that have a lower profile than the round head DDR screws that came with the triangle brackets. I bought them because they're very similar to the uh, the sort of screws that go in, pump it up, and in the groove machines. Uh, they have a nice flat profile to them. Um, they came in on the day that I was doing this. Like, everything seemed like it was just coming together so perfectly. The screws arrived just in time for final assembly. Uh, a couple of other components arrived too. The LED lenses were there. But then all this happens. I'm trying to fit another arrow. Um, and it just does not does not go the way it needs to. There's not enough room. I think this is the player one up arrow here. So remove all the panels again. Bring some sensors, put them all in place. So finally I can try the thing that I should have done first, which was to put all the arrow panels in their place, uh, elevated appropriately, sitting on stuff like sensors and brackets, or the corner stoppers in there would also have worked, I suppose, or, or both, ideally, really. And then put in the, uh, the triangle, the, the corner mounts uh, for those things. And hope that they all fit. Somehow. <laughs> My hope at this point was that I had just, uh, like, rotated some of the stationary panels around or something, just misaligned them in a way that would be easy to fix here. Uh, and if I put everything in all at once before anything was screwed in, screwed down, I could just fix it all up, get everything in good shape, and be done. I found out since here, uh, since doing this, uh, since I made the schematics for this pad, that uh, DDR pads actually have those uh, triangle bracket holders in a very different way. There's a whole metal piece, like all four of those are one piece, that makes up a switch frame for 
the same thing that the sensors themselves sit on, so my design did not match that too well at all. I just couldn't get a good enough look at the inside of the DDR machine I looked at for, for reference for this to know exactly how it was put together in, on the inside. Uh, and those pieces were expensive enough as they were. That was actually the largest cost, largest single cost in this entire project. Those, uh, it was $900 altogether for all 32 of those uh, triangle bracket holders. I'll break down the cost at some point to, uh, to show you what's, what's going on with everything. This was an expensive project. There's a lot of ways I could have done it cheaper, but I just kind of let it be expensive for, for the first pass at it. So the back cover can be trimmed down more. I've taken it out um, for further fitting. Uh, the panel risers can also be trimmed because um, those didn't fit in place where they went. So that's how I can get some extra room vertically. So yeah, that thing needs to be trimmed down in order for those to uh, to be able to go in place. So move that all out of the way. Get a utility knife. Apply a whole lot of elbow grease. I need to trim down another one there too, so I'm preparing for that as well. Yeah, that one needs to be trimmed down because those didn't quite fit in place, and then the ones at the very back too. At this point, those are glued in place, so I just kind of have to trim around that, break the glue. Um, I realize I really, really don't want to cut into my sensor, so I move it out of the out of the danger zone of where the utility knife blade is. So cut through that, just peel off where it's glued down. That works fine. So those are trimmed down. Do the same thing down there. It is a pain to do, but I managed it eventually. Alright, so hypothetically that's given me the vertical room that I need for these, these panels. At this point I'm thinking, well, if the brackets go in a little bit wonky and don't exactly meet at the corners, then I guess that's kind of okay. Let's just see if everything can fit in now that I've made this tweak. Taking off the back cover, all the stationary panels are unscrewed so they can move around freely and fit in where they need to around the, um, the arrow panels. Sensors go back so the arrows have something to sit on. So for convenience, since I don't, if eventually those uh, triangle bracket holders will be screwed into the, the wooden base. For convenience, I just have their the triangle brackets themselves screw down to them, and I'm setting them in from the top. Like, this is not how the thing would actually be assembled. Those would go in first, then the arrow panels, then the triangle brackets would screw on from the top. But it's just more convenient for fitting to do it this way. So that one fits around the retrimmed uh, back cover riser. Make sure all the rest get in. And at this point, when I'm messing around with these things, uh, this is already feeling too tight, and I don't even have all of the horizontal space in there. Like, those have to force their way in there between the arrow and the, the edge finish. Oh, no. I'm not happy about it. So however much vertical space I have, I still need enough horizontal space for both the left and right arrows and their brackets, the extra width that I failed to account for, can fit in there. And the additional problem that I have is I've already drilled all of the stationary panel screw holes, so I'm going to need to find a way to re-drill those without them the drill bit just going right back into the same holes and continuing the problem. So I'm kind of in deep despair at this point because just everything has gone off the rails and is so terribly wrong. I have ideas for how to fix this. I've learned how to fill in screw holes to redrill them. Um, I tried a few different products and methods for that. Uh, I can basically stick a um, stick a thin little dowel in there uh, with some wood glue, and then I can drill like right next to it, and it works fine. The other thing is the edge finish on both edges, well, one edge of both pads is going to have to come off. 
I'll insert some extra wood shims from scrap plywood. Yes. <laughs> Don't mind any of this. I'm just sort of letting this run out. A uh, bunch of frustration. Uh, I'll insert some shims of wood on the edge so that the edge finish gets pushed out a little bit. Screw it back in. That'll give me the extra fraction of an inch of space that I need uh, when I put it back on to be able to get everything all uh, all worked out. So anyway, I'll see you next time to try and get those problems worked out. Um, hopefully with a little bit of bit less frustration. Sorry for the false optimism at being almost done with this project. I know I said early on that I would... I would be, uh, this would be a long, tough process to fit everything in, but I kind of just even still underestimated it. Anyway, I'll see you next time.